Hey, what's up you guys? Bloodfox here, and today I am going to try and help you guys out with a guide for Sea of Indolence. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, real quickly, if you haven't already, I would suggest that you go to Whispering Islet, right here, next to um, Hypno's Eyes and Twilight Isle and pick up the quest line from Nineveh. Okay, before we get started, there are just a few things I want to say. Even though they may seem obvious, I still think that they should be said. And that is to look out for red telegraphs. Yeah, I know, super obvious, right? Well, I think it should still be said anyway. Now later on in the dungeon, there are going to be yellow telegraphs. Basically, you don't want to be in these yellow telegraphs or you will lose oxygen from your oxygen meter. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Alrighty, now for this first segment, your character is going to have on these awesome looking dive suits. Now this is just mostly for fun but you should still get used to the type of suit that you're wearing. There are two kinds. There's one that is more ranged based and there's one that is more melee based. So you just basically kill mobs and get used to the skills. After you get through what I would call the prologue of this dungeon, you will come across the first boss. Now, there isn't really anything major happening here, except for there will be a shark ad that is spawned, and you basically just need to kill this as soon as possible. That's basically it. There's nothing really difficult about this boss. Now, later on, and this definitely needs to be said, Always mechanics over DPS. I know that you guys want to put in those deeps and do a bunch of cool shit, but it's really important. You will make this dungeon much more difficult than it needs to be if you don't focus on mechanics. And that goes for future dungeons coming up as well. And I guess you could really say this goes for anything, I suppose, but whatever. After you defeat the first boss, you will find yourself without the dive suit now. And this is where the oxygen meter comes into play. So you need to manage your meter by one, a bush that can be found in the surrounding areas or an air geyser and basically you either walk up to a bush and push G to retrieve oxygen or you just stand on top of one of the air geysers to receive oxygen and this will replenish your meter. Now it becomes a little more hectic when you are in this last boss fight, so you just need to kind of micromanage a little bit. Okay, now this is the final boss, and this is where red telegraph equals bad comes in abundance. This is also where the yellow telegraphs come into play. So just basically try to dodge them as best as you can. The first phase of this boss isn't too serious. There's like a teal telegraph that'll float around his feet. You don't want to be standing in this or you will get petrified. So you want to move away when you see that. So the first major mechanic for this guy is that he will do a room-wide AoE that will one-shot if you're not in the designated safe zone. As far as I can tell, this seems to be random where it appears. Sometimes it'll be in a random location, and sometimes it'll appear 
like right on top of another player. So basically use pings, help each other out. You don't want to wipe. I'm sure that you've seen it by now, but he does this weird foot swipe move quite a lot and it creates this watery looking telegraph. Basically, if you're on top of this, you want to move out of it as quick as you can before it erupts. At 10 life bars, this guy will lose his legs and you will only have to deal with the torso. He is kind of a lot more manic in this phase. There are a lot of red telegraphs, so just be careful. He does this movement where he moves backwards and you want to like stay out of his way because as he moves forward he's going to petrify anything that is there. That goes for you, your teammate, your dog, your cat, your mom, a kid. But seriously just stay the hell out of this guy's way. Also, in terms of petrification, if you or an ally gets petrified, don't be a cuck and help them out. You can break them out. You will see the purple life bar underneath their character. Just hit them and free them from being petrified. If you yourself have been petrified, ping on top of yourself so people know. Because sometimes people will have severe tunnel vision, so it just helps to ping. Other than that, there isn't much else to say for this guy. He retains most of the mechanics from the first phase in the second phase, just a bit more accelerated. So watch out for red telegraphs and yellow telegraphs. Help your petrified teammates and ping the safe zone during the one-shot mechanic and you guys should be okay. So, I really, really hope that this was helpful to you guys. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like and maybe consider subscribing as it does help support my channel. But with that, I will be taking off and I hope you guys clear this Abyssal Dungeon. Oh. Oh.